Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of The Letter. Last episode, dinner date with Luke. That was fun and Rebecca did some internal thinking about her relationship with Ashton and you know the future of that. But yeah, very fun episode. You love to see it. And now we're, uh, I don't know, we're just continuing going back home I guess. The same wordless silence fills our short walk back to the school. Except for when Luke gestures at a nearby flower shop and enters it without waiting for Kylie and I to get his favorite daisies. Or, yeah, I think he likes daisies and he calls um, Rebecca Daisy. <laughs> so it kind of works. He emerges minutes after tearing a bouquet of daffodils. Oh, daffodils, not daisies. Never mind. Daffodils was his favorite, but he fills this place with daffodils daisies and one other flower i think uh with the same softened expression back on his face i like the previous ones he tucks this one away as soon as he looks up at us a moment he's not willing to share at my confusion he merely answers with a shrug and continues walking for someone important dude i'm waiting for that i'm i'm waiting for the loot pov dude i'm so excited so much mystery to him Honestly, I accept for, accept it for what it is, if only because he doesn't owe me an explanation. It does leave more questions about him, each one as baffling as the previous one. Those are the last words spoken this evening before we head our own ways. Up until I arrive home, I still can't understand him. Here, however, a whole different set of questions await me. And much like everything today, it comes with the littlest, little list of things. A low note greets me upon reaching my unit store. Its edges flutter lightly against the faint, warm breeze passing through the small complex. My hand stops short of twisting the knob as I stare at it, though I don't make any moves to take it. Ashton's neat strip. Lines at surface. Dropped by earlier, you weren't around. Any ideas where Scaredy Cat is? I can contact her. Inspector Abigail has a few questions. LPD stuff. Something about her dead co-workers. Anyway, let me know how the two of you have been doing. I'll see you later. Ash. Winky face. <laughs> the message he left short and straight to the point, but not without the underlying hint of friendship. He's looking for Isabella, apparently. Something about the LPD's investigation of her co-worker's death, but it ends its formal tone by checking on me. Us. Any other day, the former part of his message will likely prod at the piercing envy I've been holding, while the latter will probably send my heart a flutter. It's complicated. <laughs> New journal just dropped early in the morning. Luke and Kylie invited Rebecca for dinner as she was about to leave. Despite receiving a text message from Ashton, Rebecca agreed and the three spent the evening at a nearby coffee house. Upon returning to her flat, she found a note that Ashton left her. Little things from him that I want to mean something more. Yet, this time, only guilt fills me and my eyes briefly shift towards Isabella's empty unit. Luke's words repeat inside my head as I do so. Have I always been like this? This selfish? In truth, I've intended to call Ash after that dinner. If I didn't catch him here, invite him to the party like I've planned. There's time and he's still probably awake at around this hour. But my hands won't move. And perhaps it's, it is for the better. Until I've had the time to think this through, it'll be best if I distance myself from those I've been clinging tightly to. Find a different perspective and see things for what they are. With a soft sigh, I reach for the note and crumple it under my hand. The knob twists open with much ease when I enter this time. Maybe after some introspection, it'll be easier. For tomorrow, I have that woman and the mansion to worry about. Uh, stop right before the day end. As per usual, I have the best timing. <laughs> Alright. The night wears on without further incident, despite the great number of thoughts swimming inside my head. 
Come morning, there's only a hush. A strange sort of stillness, unlike the ones reading, greeting me every morn. This one's uneasy, tight with anticipation, like a string stretched thin, merely waiting for the proper time to snap. Granted, it doesn't make my day any less pleasant, but the edge is there. And, as expected, the second I step out of my flat, it comes apart, broken by the voices of two squabbling adults echoing from a floor below. The quiet was nice while it lasted. Shame. What the hell were you thinking? Hey, it's Ashton. And Isabella, probably. I wasn't. Ow! Could you let go? What'd she do? Not a few seconds later, they both ascend the stairs with Ashton pulling Isabella by the by her wrist. She struggles, as she should, but his hold on her remains firm. Freeing herself means having to draw blood as she attempts to prize hands off with her other one or using unnecessary force to push herself away. Neither of which is better than the other. One could potentially end in an accident while the other means, to, means having to hurt him physically. She has the good sense to realize that, at least. However, it doesn't take the desperate edge in her voice when she enters Ashton's temper with her own. So, on they go, none the wiser to my presence. Do you have any idea how much trouble you could get in? That's why I'm asking you for help. Is this what you've been doing these past three days? Because this doesn't make your case convincing, Isabella. <laughs> Rose died, Ash. I know. Every single person in Luxburg knows. It's on the damn news. But that doesn't mean... People are missing. Some of those are my friends. And BRC's just covering it all up. You can't just barge into my office and expect me to do anything about it, right off the bat. This isn't a children's game, Isabella. We have procedures. We have to follow protocol. There's red tape all over this case for a reason. We sure as hell don't investigate things just because some stupid letter spooked us. I mean, it's, it's still, you know, probably a point, but I still think the fact that the murder scene had the freaking, the letters, like, message and the same font all over the wall is kind of... Kind of telling. I don't know. I'm not a cop, though. <laughs> you have to believe me this time. If we don't do anything right now, more people will. It's been a whole week. This stupid letter prank is getting old real fast. I'm sick of it. You sick of it? It was funny the first time. Not so much now. You're the only one that can help me with this, Ash. Even Rebecca won't. All right. You two are awfully loud. What's <laughs> going on here? What's going on here? Both of their heads snap up, almost in unison. A displeased frown is on each of their faces, but this is a necessary interruption. What can they do? People still in their units have already taken interest on the commotion, with some taking a peek behind their curtains, while others are bold enough to treat open their doors, if only slightly. If they didn't keep it down, pretty soon her landlady will show up. Getting a reprimand from her is the last thing I want to happen, first thing on a Friday morning, even if this is hardly my fault. Well, if you want to continue this, you two better do it elsewhere. You're disturbing other people. <laughs> Don't worry, we're done here. No, we aren't. Becca, I looked it up. I called them. I visited some of them and... Which you shouldn't have done in the first place. Isabella, you're going to create more problems for us with what you're doing. A team has already been assigned to it. Leave it to us. Your precious team is looking at it the wrong way. Becca, it's not just Rose. There are others. That last bit strikes a chord, prods strongly at a memory. At the vicious smile already etched deeply inside my mind. The image appears clear enough that, at the mere mention of it, I stumble on my own question. What do you mean? The letter, Rebecca! It's not... There's more letters. It's nothing. If there's really something going on because of that dumb letter, none of us would be standing here. We've all read it, haven't we? But Rebecca's alive. Zach's alive. I'm alive. So for the last time, this isn't a curse. There's a murderer on the loose, and your co-workers happen to be the victims. Give it a rest, Isabella. It's too early for this shit. You think that's too much for a coincidence? Not so much. Most serial killers follow a pattern. I'll tell you about it some other time. <laughs> that is true. Also, it's there's never too much for a coincidence, I think. 
as you may um may know if you've read Hidarashi. <laughs> and anyway, coincidence or not, the point is civilians like you aren't supposed to get involved. You're putting yourself in danger. I wasn't chasing after. Why don't the both of you slow down and True. stop arguing for a minute? You need to fill in some of the blanks. What's this about your co-workers, Bell? Becca, please don't tell me now you believe this shit. Sure, in a heartbeat, I'll agree with Ashton. That's how it's always been, besides having a very good point. Really, they're the very same ones he'll make every time I ask too many questions. But, the fact of the matter is, what he wants to hear from me right now is far from what I've been seeing, sensing these past few days. It doesn't matter what Isabella or I believe on our own. Something odd has been happening around me, and that letter she picked up is at the heart of this. But, however I respond... The question in their face is only one of them will be pleased with it. I mean, I don't hate. I actually kind of, like, from all that interaction before, I kind of like the Ashton and Rebecca pairing. But I think the right choice is literally just agreeing with Isabella because that's the truth. <laughs> so we're just going to choose the choice that might help give us a good ending, I guess. There's literally no point of denying it, because it's actually the truth, even though Ashton's salty. Ashton, in particular, won't be too happy to hear it. Imagining the look on his face doesn't take too much effort. He already looks pissed. His entire posture shifts the moment my reluctant shows. Shoulders tensing, brows furrowing, eyes gaining a sharp edge. He's already bracing himself from the disappointment. <laughs> and it will be a disappointment. Not in a million years did I ever believe I'll be saying this either. I... I might have seen her. The... woman Belle's been telling us about. The one she said she saw in the attic. Both of them stare at me like I've grown an extra head, and for a few moments, Ashton looks as if he's about to have a fit. <laughs> a pause treads at its heels after. I silence thick enough, one can almost hear a pin drop. You're kidding, right? Do nope. I look like I'm joking? She's pretty spooky. Really, Becca? Not funny. Ash, I'm not lying. <laughs> Why would I lie about this? It's been this way since... Since the film fest. The past few days have been really odd since we read that letter. Or maybe you're all just feeling under the weather. <laughs> I'm not sick. Don't you think I'd know that by now? Becca, you're starting to sound like Scaredy Cat. Give me a break. Why don't you... I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, you two. And now Isabella feels guilty because, you know, she thinks it's all her fault anyways. So hearing that stuff Sachi happening to Rebecca is having a bad effect too. Isabella's voice cuts sharply through the conversation, abruptly putting an end to the brewing argument. It's all my fault. This is all yep. my fault. I mean, it kind of is, but <laughs> who knows? Maybe the letter isn't that important. I think it's just people entering the house, to be honest. I, I was only hoping I could <laughs> but who knows? Before, before any of you, before I, I'm sorry for dragging you all into this. She breathes in deep, studying, and in that moment, something falls behind her eyes as she looks away. I I promise. Nah, friendship, friendship, team up. It's the only way. A quiet resolve. The same one I saw in her that night from three days ago. But this time it burns brighter. Even Ashton wavers at its sight when she looks straight at him, looks him straight in the eyes, gaze unflinching. Gradually his grip on her wrist loosens. Well, there's nothing to fix. The problem is just this once, Ash. Her voice, though small and lacking any force, stops him. Along with it, every sound, every noise dies around us. A hush descending, as if the world is waiting for her words. You don't have to come with me. But if I don't do anything, I am going to regret it. She says as she lays a hand on top of his. Gentle. Pleading. Almost intimate if one does not consider the circumstances we found ourselves in. Please. Ashton will never tell us all. Will never admit it even to himself. But it is in that short second that his own resolve breaks. The moment the hard edge in his eye softens and he relinquishes his hold on her, letting his hand fall limply to his side. 
Wordlessly, Isabella steps back and runs off, leaving only a muttered thanks and a small lackluster smile. Only after the last of her footsteps fade away does Ashton move, breaking the silence with one of his sharp exhales before reaching up to pinch the bridge of his nose in a gesture of frustration and surrender. Did you really have to tell her that? It's the truth, homie. What do you want to hear from me then? That everything's fine? No, I want all of you to stop putting these ideas in her head. None of it is helping. <sighs> Never mind. Don't worry about her. I'll bring her back here. He's already poised to leave when my own instinct takes over. I reach for him, gripping his elbow with the same unyielding grip, that's prompted by voices whispering at the back of my mind. He's already made it clear he's not going to believe me, but he deserves a word of caution. Who knows where all of this will take us, how all of this will end. He shouldn't be caught off guard, beliefs notwithstanding. Ash, I... I know you don't believe in those things she's saying. And you know me. I'm less inclined to believe in those things as you do. But I've seen something. There's something strange going on here. You don't have to buy it. If you don't want to listen to me, fine. But please, try to hear her out. It's bad enough that Isabella goes off like this without telling anyone. I'm just worried something might happen to her if she keeps at it. Talk to her, okay? As if she trusts me enough for that. Doesn't the fact that she approached you first about this, instead of me, already say a lot? Kinda. <laughs> a different kind of trust. Granted implicity and never spoken, sometimes too big, too fragile to last. He falls silent for a moment and he turns it over in his mind. In the end, all he manages to offer is a small nod before he departs, and a promise to at least listen to her, without the teasing of or the jibes. A favor for me and the least he could do for her. This is as much as I can do for him as well, until I've understood what's happening myself. New journal. Okay. Not the worst interaction in the world. <laughs> Wait, where where to drop? Here, Ash, Isabella, and Ashton arrived at Salemwell, having an argument about the missing BRC employee's investigation. Annoyed by the noise, Rebecca interviewed, and in the end, asked Ashton to keep an open mind. Tonight, hopefully, where this all started, will provide the answers I'm looking for. Dinner party. Woo. Ermagerd Mansion. It set the whole thing's off to a bad start, and all of a sudden, whatever Isabella claims dwelling in this mansion becomes the least of my concerns. Of all the cabbies in Luxembourg, I have to chance upon the superstitious one. Still not as bad as finding out your car's starter refuses to crank on when it was still working this morning. Yes. But it's equally as frustrating when you're forced to walk the rest of the way. Oh, it is a cab and driver. That's... Sucks, dude. I guess he's worried about getting cursed. For good reason, but like... I don't know, get it closer. <laughs> oh, because the driver got spooked. Comes with the territory of a cab driver. Sometimes you gotta risk it for the biscuit. Isabella and him will get along so well. I do get his reasons. After all, I've had my fair taste of the bazaar lately. All of which might have been brought upon by the letter Isabella found here. But you'd think he'd at least be charitable enough to take me a little closer to the house itself, not at a distance 50 minutes away from by, from it by foot. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Good thing I'm not wearing anything too formal or constricting. Just a classic pink. <laughs> Otherwise, that shirt what? <laughs> My bad. Otherwise, that shirt walk would have likely put me in a bad mood, long before I had to suffer in a room full of strangers tonight. Although this soon proves to be a problem, the second the driver comes into view and I near the entrance. Severely underdressed is a total understatement to describe how I look. Cars worth more than my own apartment and childhood home combined line at the mansion's front yard. Men and women decked out in their best also flock near the entrance. Most are eager for the festivities to start, while some are simply idling about, enjoying the warm afternoon sun before it sets. 
but once the woman standing at the front porch speaks, their undivided attention immediately shifts to her. Hana, it's been a while, honestly. Presumably Miss Wright, from the confident manner she holds herself among the present company. This, despite keeping a far simpler appearance than the rest of her own guests, or not having her husband beside her. A trait worthy of utmost admiration. At best, I wish she's the envy of every woman, the subject of every gossip in Luxembourg. Welcome, welcome everyone. And Mom said we could have been good friends. <laughs> I can't even picture myself mingling with this kind, with the kind of guests she has. Though I admit she does seem familiar now that I've seen her this close. Memories of sitting in a vanity, not mine, being dressed in clothes too fancy for my tastes. They flit briefly in my mind until her cheerful tone rises above the buzz of her enraptured audience again. Please make yourselves at home. I wish I could share her enthusiasm, really. But being surrounded by all this extravagance, for the lack of a better term, merely makes me dread how the rest of the night might go. I should have had let Lute's words affect me like that. I shouldn't have. I should have just gone ahead and asked Ashton like I've planned. Well, he's gonna be here anyway. <laughs> if he were here, then I won't have to. Be careful with Shirley, all right? Oh, yeah, Shirley's his car. The rest of that thought dies in my mind at once. A moment of astonishment overcomes me before confusion sets in seconds later. It takes another for my body to catch up. Once it does, when I finally turn to see it for myself, it's this familiar mop of hair that catches my eyes first. And there he is, almost in arm's reach if it isn't for the death standing between us. Ashton Frey, standing in the Ermigerd Mansion's driveway, with an air too lackadaisical. I know that word. They use that word too much in Hidarashi. It's now ingrained in me, because every time I see it, I'm like, oh, what's this word? I have to Google. Then someone's in the comments saying, Aiden, you already looked at that word. I remember it now. <laughs> For someone who absolutely abhors parties in any form. Or has any business here, as far as I know? The picture it forms is too bizarre for me that my mouth speaks out ahead of any coherent thought. He shivels on his heels with an equally puzzled face. Shot dashed in face. An odd expression flashes momentarily across it once he sees me, though he blinks it away before I can figure out what it is exactly. Becca, what are you doing here? I was invited. <laughs> really? I had no idea you were friends with the host. Well, it's my parents, actually. B but that's beside the point. What are you doing here? You hate parties. He's just chilling. I still do. I'm just here on behalf of a friend. AKA, he's here to investigate. <laughs> that in itself is weird coming from him. It doesn't help that he isn't even making an effort to spare Lance my way when he answers. Instead, they're focused at some point in the crowd. His gaze darting between people walking past us until a small frown forms his face. He's looking for Luke. That's uh, rare. Do you have someone with you then? Nope, just me. I won't be staying long. Oh well, if that's the case, maybe you and I can... Chief? <laughs> Ashton, what's... The chief's there, and he didn't even know about it. Unexpectedly, he places a hand on my shoulder, stopping me mid-sentence. He still has a distracted look on him, except this time his eyes are sharper, as if he has found what or who he's been searching for among the throng of party girls party goers earlier. Sorry, Becca, I, I need to... And the chief's uh, Rochelle's husband, right? There's something I need to check for a bit. Forgot his name. I'll talk to you later. Do you have a ride home? No, I have to take a cab here. My car wouldn't stop this afternoon. My car is cursed. <laughs> but, but what about... I told you to get that old thing checked before, didn't I? You can head back with me after this. Anyway, I gotta go. See ya. Be careful, okay? I meet the smile he hastily throws my way with a frown of my own. What does he mean by that? But before I can ask already, he's turned his back from me and is walking away without a single explanation whatsoever. In some desperate a effort, I try to catch up to him, if only to know what warranted this sudden departure and his odd warning at the end. Hey, be careful about what exactly- 
only for my attempts to be interrupted by a muffled ringing from my pocket. Mom's voice, Mom's cheerful voice greets me as soon as I answer. Yes, yes, I'm at the party already, Mom. Yes, I'll say hi to her if I can. The conversation itself doesn't last long. Just a simple hello and a reminder to enjoy the party and to send their regards to their old students. But when the call ends, I get to look up Ashen's already nowhere in sight. With a sigh and admittedly a little disappointment, I tuck my mobile back into my pocket and head inside. Even with familiar company, however coincidental this meeting is, this is somehow shaping up to be a terrible evening. The sounds of Bander too. I remember it. <laughs> Quick hydration. The party hits full swing an hour later. With the host's opening remarks given, still no sign of her husband, the poor woman, and the guests promptly fed, the band shifts the melody to a livelier tune. Soon, laughter and the rhythmic tapping of shoes fill the room, all in accordance to the lifting strains of music. It seems fun, I admit. Fascinating, at certain moments, the flurry of dancers making the music their own, almost with no care in the world. If it weren't so indisposed, I'd have joined them. I'd have joined the crowd for a song or two. There isn't a lack of invitations anyway. Plenty of them, in fact, with some asking more than once. Nice. <laughs> it's only my stubborn refusal that prevents me from joining them. And I can. A single nod is all it takes, and the evening would have been far enjoyable for me. But pride and my own silly hopes, the thought of being seen with one of them by him curbs that, as much as I hate to admit it. Because doing so also means outright acknowledging the douche's claims. That he has to be the one to tell me that still sends my blood boiling. I would have preferred someone more agreeable, less of an arse. It's a hard truth to swallow, especially when the very person at the center of it makes denial difficult. Can't even spare a minute of his attention or a single glance at me the whole evening. Hell, Zachary might have spoken more words to me. Ah, yes, he's chilling here too. The big guy's busy covering the event to boot. But at least he manages to slip in a conversation or two between Tate's or a small wave of his hand when he passes by. <laughs> What's Ashton's excuse? He's been flitting in and out of sight the whole time. One moment, he's hanging around a small group. In another, he's hovering around the string band. Just a second ago, he's wolfing down some deviled eggs by the buffet table, a glass of wine in hand. Fun fact, I've never had deviled eggs, I think. Maybe I had it once. I don't remember it, though. I'm an, I'm alright with eggs. I never crave them, but I never... I don't hate them. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. <laughs> the next thing I know, he's gone! If I didn't know any better, I'd say he doesn't want to be with any of his friends. Is it because his boss is here? What's the big deal about that? It has never bothered him before. I swear, the next person who asks, I'm dancing the night away with. Ashen can go fuck himself. You would catch his eye a lot better <laughs> if you wore nicer clothes, don't you think? Nice. Her voice almost made me jump, too focused on the gobshite wandering around the ballroom and my own annoyance to notice. If she's heard any of the profanities I've mumbled or she's taken notice of my discomfort, Comfiture, she makes no comment on it, merely greeting me with a smile when I turn my attention to her. Miss Hannah Wright gives off a whole different air when she's not speaking to an audience. Homely, a bit too friendly for my liking. But I guess that comes from being raised in such an environment and having to deal with pompous, snooty people. Though I suppose nothing has really changed from years ago. I remember her carrying herself in the same manner during that one and only visit. Does she remember any of it? I won't be surprised if she doesn't. It has taken me a while myself. She's probably met a lot of people like little Becky throughout the years. Might have already forgotten about me or my parents. People like her thrive on connections after all. Nevertheless, I return a smile, awkward and stiff as it may be. Didn't realize the housewarming was going to be this uh, fancy. I would have gone with a nice dress if I knew. Oh, you're fine, dearie. It's only 
we really the parvenu? Those who climb, that come to these parties all dolled up. Quite the black-haired beauty, isn't he? <laughs> it takes me a while to realize who she's talking about. Until Ashen walks by again, in closer proximity than any of the times he has done so far this evening. Still without a look of acknowledgement our way, though. Even if Miss Wright speaks loud enough to catch the attention of anyone within earshot. Who, Ash? You know, you really shouldn't have turned down his offers. If I wasn't married, I'd happily go dancing with those young men. But you said a name. Ash. That's the exquisite lad you've been looking at all this time. I don't know him, and I'm the one hosting this party. That must mean you know each other. Is he your boyfriend then? Because that would explain those rejections. <laughs> Look at that. That's a thumbnail, baby. <laughs> it's pretty cute. This isn't the first time someone has made that assumption. Almost every student I've had did in the past. My co-workers more often than not assume he is, a few of my neighbors also think for an item. Not that Ashton ever has ever reacted to those. He's been quite indifferent about it, in fact. Still, the heat of a blush creeps up my cheeks. A denial ready, despite wanting it to happen so badly myself. What? No, that's ridiculous. He isn't my boyfriend. Such a violent reaction. A simple no would have sufficed. Many here would be happy to hear it. <laughs> I haven't been looking at him. Eh, it sounds like you have been. I do my best to summon a straight face, but before her good cheer, it easily falters. That's right. You've been staring. Quite heatedly, in fact. <laughs> Although I'm not sure if you look like you want to kiss him or kill him. It's more the latter currently. Just don't go murdering him on my property. It's already cursed. Don't need more ghosts. Imagine being haunted by freaking Ashton, man. <laughs> I don't want to walk into a room and suddenly find a body there. <laughs> it's infectious in a way. No sooner I find myself enjoying our chat more than I've imagined myself to. Although her attention briefly wavers at one point, she remains a good companion. Even more, once I've mentioned who my parents are, her face quickly lights up, and a fondness graces her face, despite meet the meeting from several years ago being a short one. But of course, there are some things we really can't avoid talking about. After all, it's one of those, one of the few things I remember her asking me the moment she spotted little Becky in the room. Do you have a boyfriend? In retrospect, it's an odd thing to talk about as children, when there are loads of things we could have started with. Yes, oh, I remember you. You were the cutest little thing with glasses. <laughs> and when we met, you were having boy troubles with this lad called something with an A. <laughs> For that long. <laughs> I believe I still have the clothes she gave me, chosen all so I could impress him. And even back then, Ashton has always been denser than a rock, and that one attempt to get him to notice bad fired spectacularly. Sure, he's keen, he's a detective for heaven's sake, but feelings, more often than not, escapes him. What was it again? Aaron, Alan, Adele, Albert, <laughs> Alexander, Andrew? Which makes this whole talk all the more embarrassing. And the more names she lifts off, the more my discomfort grows until she smiles, until my smile turns into a grimace. What will she think of me? Here she is married to a man she pro most probably loves at that. While I'm stuck in the same place yearning for the same person. Ashton! Ash! That man is that boy! The same one? Oh goodness me, after all these years! We're hard stuck. You don't really need to announce it to everyone with an earshot, you know. Keep it down. I'm so sorry, but it really is cute. <laughs> she says that, but for a short moment, a hit of pity flickers in her eyes. I take that as a chance to change the subject before anything more can be said over the matter. I haven't figured out how I should feel about things Lu told me. Now I'm getting dragged into a similar discussion. 
nice party, Miss Wright. Though to be frank, I doubt she's she'll be willing to pass this up. The topic has already captured her attention. Please, Hana is fine. We're friends of the sort, aren't we? We must be friends, seeing as I know about your little infatuation, Vicky. <laughs> Don't you worry, dearie. You'll have your happy ending yet. I'm not too concerned about that, am I? That's not what I'm looking for. Oh? And what makes you think that? Doesn't everybody want their happy ending? The idea of happy endings sounds like they're just for fairy tales. And they are, sort of. I don't think you can just sit around, trapped in some tower, and hope for the best. If you love them, you have to fight for it, right? That's the based answer that we chose to follow. You know, trying to save the marriage. <laughs> Thank you for saying it, Rebecca. And hope that everything will just fix itself on its own. Like everything, you have to work at it. Hypocrisy, that hypocrisy, <laughs> hypocrisy, <laughs> hypocrisy. That's what this is. How dare I preach about something when it's exactly what I've been doing? True. And then, and then, I go and act as if I'm entitled to any of it. That, by virtue of us growing up together, he must return whatever I feel for him. That he's not allowed to look at another because I'm the one who stayed by his side the longest. When in the first place, Ashton has always been his own person. This is something I cannot force on him. I can only hold on to these. Take care of it until the time comes I can confess it to him. Excuse me. Great, if he reciprocates. But if he can't? If he won't? Selfish. I've been too selfish. How laughable that Lute's words still straight true up until now. But what do I know? I'm sure the daughter of the two greatest professors I've ever known is smart enough to know what she's talking about. At one point, maybe I would have easily agreed to that. However, the past weeks have also seen changes in the way I view things. As nice as these things sound, it turns out whatever I previously know may not even be true for other people or for myself. It is sobering and almost funny how each how things I might have said with much certainty before now has doubts muddy in each of them. But there will be a time to mull about these later, because when a hush suddenly descends in the room, a whole different issue rears. Uh, this will be funny. <laughs> Wonder if they interact. <laughs> Especially when Luke, fucking Luke, strides into a now quiet ballroom fashionably late and oozing with the same pompous mine. He always cares around with them. Good evening, ladies and gents. Enjoying the party. Uh. I hope I'm not too late in welcoming you all to the right mansion. <laughs> so cocky. Uh, this is not the operator if they show the Rochelle thing again. But for long, Hannah leaves my side to join him and it doesn't take a genius to piece it all together. Welcome one and all to our humble abode. Tonight, if you have yet to find yourself in your roles, you are all ladies and lords of the court of your king and queen. If you would excuse my presumptuousness. <laughs> Glad. <laughs> so, enjoy the feast that has been laid out for your senses as we only allowed the best to be served. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. Thanks, Luke. His attitude, the manner he carries himself around people, his unfamiliarity with that part of the city. A fucking course. I should have known. Although I'm partly at fault here, tabloids and gossip columns have never really been my thing. I should have also expected that whatever Luke fucking right is, some sort of drama will sure follow. He seems the kind of person who revels in it, figures it'll find him on his own even when he's not asking for it. And the Rochelle scene, that we'll use the other thumbnail. Oh god, this was so awkward. <laughs> Look at Hannah, man. It happens amidst a round of applause and hoots that people lagging behind the crowd they've gathered does not catch on until the cheers turn into several scandalized gasps. I am pregnant with your little bastard. You promised me you'll take responsibility. God damn it, Luke. I finally got you to talk to me after months of silence, and you do this to me! 
What do you mean you're pregnant with? Luke, is this true? Lies and slander, woman! <laughs> Security! Yo, Hans, take her out of here before she makes an even bigger fool of herself! No, no, you do not do this to me! I was so ready to leave my stupid oaf of a husband! I told you to leave that damn wife of yours! Jesus. <laughs> look at her! Does she look like she wants a baby? Does she look like she could take care of a baby? Very weird. <laughs> I think we also went scorched earth on her afterwards and cut her out out of our lives when we were playing as Hana. The commotion doesn't go further, despite the drunk woman appearing like she has plenty more venom to spill. In a little while, security shows up escorting her out. Apparently, she's the chief inspector's wife too. As if this whole thing can't get any more fucked up than it already is. What a mess. But the damage has been done, and beyond the repercussions of the Sobrin, I'm more worried about Hana. Maybe loot too, in part. I've seen the man that hides behind his self-importance, and it is someone who cares for the person who stands beside him. No matter how questionable that is now. After all, no anger is worse than that of a scorned woman. And Hana. While well, as refined and well-mannered as she is in front of her guests, I'm not sure she'll be all too willing to tolerate this. Her party, her home, her husband, and that woman has just dared to walk all over it. Yep, that was kind of our reaction. <laughs> it's in her eyes when she turns to her, the face of someone who demands she must be given the same respect she has long deserved. You are no longer welcome in any of our estates, our properties, and our businesses. And we will no longer patronize yours. You're cut out of here. Now, escort the girl and make sure she isn't standing even an inch within our grounds. Hannah's outrage is a strange sight to witness. After those smiles and the grace she has carried herself through the entirety of the party. Like this, her eyes burning bright with fury. I doubt she can do much more. Ruin the scandalous woman if need be. Shaming her is already an act of mercy generous enough coming from her you won't show your face to me ever again if you know what is good for you rochelle take her away no one project protests not even the subject of ire as she is forcefully dragged out <laughs> even the smile on loot's face wavers when she eventually turns to him and pulls him out of the room for a talk of their own for a brief moment there's a concerted effort between those left in the hall, a short second of tense silence while struggle to figure out what to do with themselves. But true to the kind of taught these situations a chat, it won't last too long. Alright, I think this is a good point to end. Um, <laughs> some drama, some fun interactions with Hana. Um, next time we'll continue off the party, see what happens, because this is also... Because Marianne might be freaking locked in the secret basement thing by now, so that's not exactly good. Maybe we can rescue her. Who knows, though. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye!